Welcome to Jake Cocoon! If you don't know this game, let me give you a quick overview. Jake Cocoon was released in 1998 by Genki Software. While the game got middling reviews, what really stood out to me was its art direction. Katsuya Kondo, the main character designer of Studio Ghibli, was directly involved in Jake Cocoon's production. His distinctive style really jumped out at me and translated fairly well to the PS1. Okay, so graphics are one thing, but what about gameplay? Jake Cocoon is similar in a lot of ways to Pokemon. You battle monsters and turn-based battles and raise them into the perfect killing machines. Or, uh, how are you supposed to play that? <clears throat> what really stood out from the wash of other monster collectors is that Jake Cocoon allowed you to fuse monsters together to create new ones. But that's not why we're here today. The other feature this game has is that your trainer was allowed to fight by themselves. Imagine if you tried that in Pokemon. Probably would not have gone well. So let's get to it, shall we? Can he beat this game without capturing a single monster? Let's find out, huh? Okay, so the game starts with our hero having a strange dream. A man in a funny hat summons a backflipping dragon who kills us. Afterward, we're sent to meet Jesus. Anyway, the early part of the game isn't too tough. But let's talk about the challenge itself. Normally, you catch monsters to level up, and then decide to either use them or spin them into silk. Because monsters don't drop money when defeated, and selling silk is one of the only ways to make money. Since we have to catch monsters to level up, we are entirely relying on items and equipment to get more powerful. It's gonna be tough. You don't know anything yet, do you? <laughs> Getting into the run proper, we grab the contents of this chest. We fight the poacher, which is probably our first real boss. He's no joke like the mass boy, but he isn't exactly tough either. His goat is probably a pretty powerful minion, but we mince him up soon enough. Once the poacher goes down, we face the real boss of the area, Kikinak. Thanks for our planning ahead, the Birdman is manageable. He's fast and hits hard, but with the fire magic we packed, he folds pretty quick. When Kikinak was defeated, he tells us all about a magical herb that can cure any sickness. That's pretty handy, since our entire village has fallen ill. You are so powerful! Well, except for the important people, like the blacksmith. He's going to be our best friend, since the equipment he sells is going to carry us through most of the game. After stocking up, we head out into the forest and beat the crap out of the poacher again. And then we run into this tree mushroom thing and accidentally blast it with a hot sauce beam. Turns out that the tree isn't exactly a fan and makes this old lady explode. The old lady exploding makes the world end. Yeah, that's what happened. And somehow, this poacher is still around while everyone else died. He's probably the only character to have a happy ending in the entire game. I can't believe I just lost a little kid. I guess I'm over the hill. Maybe I should just retire. See you around, kid. Now that the world has ended, we meet with this monkey man and his two concubines who tell us we need to collect four magic gems and defeat the Dark One. Pretty standard fare, but honestly the whole game feels like it's on a bit of a tight budget, so I'll let it slide. We're set to fight the fire boss, that's literally his name, and his giant scorpion demon. This is where the game really ramps up in difficulty and we're pressed really hard and win. Not only can he deal a huge amount of fire damage, but he can even poison us. It must be where Tabasco got its scorpion sauce. It takes quite a bit of effort and careful resource management, but we eventually do manage to defeat the scorpion and his master. So as you can probably guess, the next fight was much easier. Uh, ignore that. <laughs> the wind boss and his lackey are just as tough as the fire boss and have a cruel strategy of putting you to sleep and then healing themselves. In order to counter the scheme, I tried to poison the boss, but it didn't really stick. Instead, I fought a bunch of chalky looking dragons and they dropped a wavy fire sword. Gotta say though, I do really like this boss's design. It's really intimidating. But then there's this guy. <laughs> he never skipped leg day. He's a big jerk that tries to petrify you, but we've been fighting an endless horde of blue dogs and finally acquired the best armor in the game. We're not affected by that crap anymore. We slap the crap out of him with our mall katana, and then the final boss very rudely ambushes us. If you don't go to the menu directly from the victory screen, you're out of luck. The dream man from the start of the game is back, and this time we have to fight him for real. Right off the bat, he summons a bug with a giant chin. Honestly, it looks like the host of a late night comedy show making fun of washed up celebrities. And this guy, well, he's a huge dirk. He changes the field element every few turns and then his own element to match. It's not too bad, up until he switches to water, where he heals for a third of his health. 
with the damage we're doing, there's just no chance. I failed to beat Jake Kuhn without catching any monsters. But there's hope. I get the feeling that if I build for magic damage and use the spell items from the store when he's weak to that spell, we might be able to damage him enough to close out the victory. But I gotta leave that challenge to you guys. Thank you for watching, and if you made it this far, how about hitting that subscribe button and liking the video? I'm going to be investing more time into my videos these days, and if you have any challenges or ideas you want me to do, leave a comment below. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode.